The Chan Lu style wrap bracelets are fun to wear and pretty easy to make. I even did a video on one a while back. But when I got a new jig to experiment with, I thought I would try to take it up to the next level and make a wave style bracelet. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another jewelry making video at keepsakecrafts.net. So you may remember a while back, I made a video showing you how to make this quintuple wrap bracelet. It's pretty easy to do. It's a little time consuming, but I love wearing this. I just love the kind of boho look. I think it's cool. I even made another one that's a double wrap and I wear both of these a lot. But way back then when I was looking for inspiration, I remembered seeing bracelets that had a wave to them where the elements weren't all the same width or even close. And I wondered if I could replicate that, especially once I got this jig from the folks at Speedy Jig, it occurred to me this might make it easier. So I did quite a bit of experimenting with that. It took a bit of figuring because the wave is actually pretty tricky to get well. And I'm gonna show you what I learned today. So it starts off the exact same way this bracelet does with some cord. Now, since I use leather cord, I've made, I think three of these. One was for a friend and these two. I wanted to try something different. And I thought hemp cord would be cool. And I thought it would be fun to have it in colors. Because one thing I liked about this bracelet was I used a pink silk cord to do the wrapping and I liked having that pink edging on the bracelet. The only uh, silk cord I have at the moment is black. So I thought, well, if I use the color, then I'll get that same contrast. Here's one I started with that. And I can't say that I really like it. I think there's something about that thicker leather cord that just gives the beads a nice frame and, and finishes it. And it, this just looked, well, thin, which it is. Thin and insubstantial, and I didn't love it. So I went back to the leather cord. So it's black on black. Um, oh, well. So what you'll want to do is, first of all, decide how many wraps you want to do. Then you measure your wrist. Seven inches is an average bracelet. Take your bracelet measurement, multiply it by the number of wraps you want, add six inches, and then double it. So I'm making a single wrap that's seven plus six is 13, doubled is 26. I have a 26, maybe slightly longer piece of leather cord here. And you can find this in other colors. I just don't happen to have any other colors at the moment. And for your closure, a shank button is great. You can also use one that, as long as it has at least two holes. I love taking the opportunity to go through my button boxes because I inherited them from my grandmother, my mother-in-law. I got some from my neighbor. So I've got all kinds of cool buttons. So just slide your button onto your cord, slide it down to the end or to the middle and then go ahead and do just an overhand knot so that you have a knot there. And pull that knot all the way up to the button. Simple enough. Now take yourself, depending on, uh, if you're making a really long wrap bracelet, don't pull out yards and yards of thread. It'll make you crazy. I'm going to do about two yards of thread here. Since I'm doing a single wrap, I don't want to have to put on a new piece. And if you want to learn more about putting on a new piece, like on this bracelet, the multiple wraps, what I did, let's see if I can find it. Somewhere in the middle, I had to change threads. And what I did was I just covered it all with a bunch of jump rings, which I think adds an interesting textural element and some movement and covers that spot. But you may find, uh, I was kind of aggravated with this project by the time I got done with it. Actually, I'm really not done with it yet. Uh, and I found I had absolutely no desire to do more than one wrap of <laughs> this pattern. It was, it was really tricky, and I'll tell you more about that as I go along. These are big eye needles. I'll have a link to these. They're fantastic because they're so easy to thread. 
because they have that big eye. So thread your needle. And then to start, I'm just going to take maybe half inch of the thread, lay it facing the other cut ends of your cord, but right up against that knot, and then start wrapping. And just wrap maybe a quarter of an inch, just a little, little bit. And then use a quick drying glue like super glue. This would actually be a good place for not the gel. I like this gel for my polymer clay work because it doesn't drip and ooze, but actually something like super new glue that's very liquid and will soak in is great. And then just go ahead and let that dry. Set it aside and let it dry before you continue. Now for design. So I thought I would be real clever and lay out my design using head pins. I had this great picture in mind of using some check glass beads and some of these beads. And this got all messed up. I'll show you this in a moment. And I just thought, oh, that will be cool. I'll, I'll gradually build up the design, uh, build up the length and, and gradually go back down and have this really great design. This did not work at all. The reason this didn't work is there are too many beads and there was too much opportunity for things to buckle and flop. If you look at this sample I showed you earlier, you'll notice that what I ended up going with was no more than three beads in a row because it just starts to buckle and, and causes problems. So once I figured that out, took that all apart, and I didn't think it was a bad idea to lay them out on head pins because then you see exactly how long each row is, but it just didn't work with the amount of beads I was using. And then I said, all right, fine, I'll use less beads in my rows. I won't use all of the little bitty beads. So then I pulled out these, these beads and I really love these colors, the chartreuse with this kind of deep turquoise. I said, okay, well then I will use less beads, bigger beads, and try to more carefully manage the amount of space in between them. So something like this. But what I found the problem was these beads. Because when they're suspended, they're going to turn like this. You're never going to get nice spacing. If you think about it, I, I ended up pulling it apart because it just made a mess. It just didn't look good. You have this huge gap from here to here. It just didn't work. And here are a few other things I considered. So I looked at these, which I thought would be gorgeous, but again, the same problem. They're going to turn sideways on you. They're not going to stay like this, and they just make a huge gap from one hole to the next, which is how your cord is going to span. It just makes a huge gap. It, it doesn't look good. So what I recommend is round beads, and you could use something like this. So round beads are good, or even slightly oval or barrel-shaped beads. As long as they're round this way, they will work. Even some of these, maybe smaller ones, would work, except the problem with these is that my, my little beads I was using as spacers slipped right through, and I didn't want to use all of my nice eightos to fill the holes of the beads. Cubes would also be good, something that's symmetrical around when you're looking at it from the hole down that it's symmetrical all the way around. So a cube is good, a barrel bead, and kind of an elongated oval looks nice or around. The other thing I found that was important was having nice gradual steps in between the sizes of your beads. So I pulled out these round ones and these kind of oval ones. These are both check fire polish. And then these are round, roundels and filled in with some of these little brass beads. And you could see there's a very gradual increase and decrease in size here, and that is what I found works best. 
most of the time that I spent in planning this project was in trying to find an assortment of beads that worked in colors together and also worked in size. You can do this on any, any space. You can do it on a board. I loved using the jig for this, especially for doing the wave. And what I have here, let's see, that's dry by now while I've been yakking. So I'll just trim off, make sure you're trimming off the short end, not the long one. What I have here to hook on my, to keep my piece on the jig are just a couple of binder clips, or bulldog clips. And I'm gonna put this over the shank so that it holds it securely, because otherwise it'll pop right off. And actually that, I'm going to put these on either side of that little tab. Bring those together, just make sure they're clamped together. And this is one thing I like about the jig is I can now back it up to that and have some tension on it. That's great. To do the weaving, you're just going to come up from one side underneath the leather cord and in through the middle. So in this case, I'll start with one of my brass beads. And of course, the first one's always a pain because you've got this tiny space to fit it in. Just kind of hold it there with the thumb of one hand while you bring your needle under and up through the middle and then back through the bead. Now here's a step that is very important and worth taking your time on. You do not want to split this thread. If you do, it will be impossible to tighten it up properly. So pinch it on either side of the bead between your thumb and index finger so that you're pulling it away from the hole then you should be able to slide your needle through the other side of the hole and not pierce the thread. Now you can test if you te pierce the thread by just pulling this and making sure the bead slides on it. And if it does, then you did good. And a very helpful tool here is an awl. Put your awl in that loop and then you can just pull and that will snug it up and then there it is in that space. So I really like the technique of having a few smallish beads so that will help me to gradually build up my height of each row. Again, under and up through the middle of the cords, add a bead. I'm going to this time add two of these beads do the same thing, kind of position that in there with your thumb, up and under and through the middle. And go ahead and, yeah, let me show you what happens if you're not careful with these and you pierce the thread. When I try to pull this, it, it, it will hardly move. It's, well, now it's moving, but I can feel, and you can probably see that thread's getting ragged. I kind of caught some of it, and it shredded it before it pulled it off. So it, it, it isn't, it was only barely split. If you split it really well, you won't be able to move it at all. But you really don't want to make your thread ragged like that. It doesn't look nice. So it really is worth it. It's, it takes a little bit longer to do each stitch, as it were, but it's worth it to keep your thread in good shape. So again, put your all in there. And that just makes it so much easier. And if you have to, like there's an extra loop up here where that didn't tighten and that will happen. And that's the beauty, I think, of having the jig here. My other ones I made without the jig and they weren't hard, but this is so much easier. Slide that down here. All right, the next row, I'm going to do three of these. 
and it's all done in the exact same way. So, so many of you have told me that you enjoy my tutorials, that you like my teaching, and I'm, I'm just thrilled to pieces about that because my goal is to inspire and encourage you. So, yeah, I give you projects that you can make and copy, but it's my hope that you'll get ideas that will spark new ideas for yourself that help you to improve your creativity. Burns Band-Aid's not helping. Cut it out. Stop that. Okay. <laughs> and if you're interested in even more of my teaching, if you'd like to get even more, my patrons can have the opportunity to get up to two additional tutorials every month. Those are bonuses that are only available to the folks who support me on Patreon. And if you want to learn more about that, go ahead and check out patreon.com slash Sandy Sewin. And if you're wondering why it's not Sandy Beaden or, or Sandy Jewelry Making, uh, sewing is kind of my first love. I've always done that and I always kind of go back to it. I remember when I was scrapbooking, I thought of changing the name to Sandy Scrappin. But I decided to leave it at sewing because I really do always go back to that. And no matter how many jewelry and polymer clay tutorials I make every year, I always find the time to sew a little something. So you can see here how nice it is to have some sort of jig just to hold that in place for you while you work on it. Now we're going to start adding the beads, my smallest one, and add a brass bead on either side. So don't forget up through the middle. Because this is a little bit bigger side profile than one of those. And this took, like I said, a bit of experimenting and playing and you'll have to do that with your beads too. I pulled out several bracelets <laughs> because they were just, um, yeah, they weren't working. And I, I really did find that with more than three beads, they just flopped too much. And by the way, if you're interested in the supplies I used, I don't have links to everything. Like the big round beads that I'm using have been in my stash for ages. A friend gave them to me a long time ago. So I have no idea where those came from. I don't know if you know that with every tutorial I make, I write a blog post. And in that blog post is always a tools and materials list. And I put links to as many of the products as I can find links to. And yes, most of those, if I can get them, are affiliate links. So I may make, if you buy something, I may make a few cents <laughs> on the purchase, but I can almost guarantee that money will go back into buying more crafty supplies. That is one way you can support this channel if you can't be a patron, and I know not everybody can, is to purchase things through the affiliate links or just go check them out before you decide to place a purchase on Amazon and I actually get credit for that. I'm not sure the exact time frame. But if you're interested, make sure you click uh, on the tag in the upper right, or there's a, always a link in the description box, or there's always a link at the bottom left in the last 20 seconds of the video. So you can see as I'm going here, I'm just adjusting And you may find as it gets wider that what you'll have to do is loosen this up just a little because it's spreading it out and so you need a little bit more. So that's another thing I really loved about having the jig with this. If I had it just taped to my workspace, I'd have to keep on taping it and retaping it. And so this, I just loosen the wing nut, slide it down a little. So you can see I carefully chose the beads. I had so many different color combinations I wanted to do. 
and I ended up using these ones mostly because they were the ones that I had that were graduated enough in size to work. And even this is actually a little, there's a little, there's kind of a big jump between this one and the next one, as you'll see. You can see how handy it is using the all there. And I just kind of cut, try to keep making these straight. And you're not going to be able to get it right up against it because that bead is wider. So you're going to have a gap. And the question you have to ask yourself is how much of a gap is acceptable? I'll tell you, I have been looking for a way to use these beads for years since my friend gave them to me. I just love them. They're so mm, juicy looking. <laughs> They're just beautiful, I think. Something about that matte finish I really like. And I've pulled them out for so many projects over the years. And it was always, nope, put them back and use something else. I think they're going to work for this, though. Now, you notice with every single bead, I'm testing, I'm pulling the thread away. And that's because if you don't, if you split it and you pull your needle all the way through before you discover that, then what you have to do is unthread the needle pull the whole thing back out and then redo it. Now here you can see because this one is kind of a biggish bead and maybe a bigger step if I had one in between that might have been good. There is a bit more of a gap here. You just have to decide with your own experimenting if that works for you or not. Now I'm going to start decreasing again just following the same pattern. And what you may need to do as you're decreasing is actually tighten this up a little bit because you're going to be using a little less cord as you decrease it. Here's one that's a little further along and you can see this great wave pattern you get, which I think is cool. And I think it's really important that you have a heftier cord here that shows that off. So at this point, you're just going to continue your pattern until your bracelet is the length you want from the center of your button shank to the end, make it the length you want. So here you can see I've finished my repeat. Now it may not work out exactly to the right length. Mine happened to, if not, you can just kind of fake it at the end, do a couple more repeats, uh, add a few more pieces, you know, maybe, go two one two with the brass beads or, or whatever just kind of fake a, a pattern at the end now you can stop here if you want and finish your bracelet but i've also figured out how we can add a border which only enhances the shape and frames all of this out really nicely so if you want to add a frame what you'll need is another piece of your cord the same length and what I did here was I went in with my awl and just kind of opened out this knot. Now, if you find that impossible, you can do a couple things. You can try sliding the cord through the shank again. I wouldn't knot over this again just because it'll make it kind of bulky. Unless you're using something finer like the hemp. But there, I've opened up a hole in that knot that I can slide this leather cord through. That way I don't need to knot it and it's it's secure in there you can also if you're using a finer cord you can just tie a knot around that one and then i'll pull this tight again next thing i'm going to do is attach another length of my silk cord in the exact same way i'll just go over all of these add a dab of glue and now I'm ready to begin my frame. I've gone ahead and done one side of this. You can see how much it adds. It just looks really great. I would strongly recommend when you're doing this that you have the side with the new cord on the side where you're doing the loops. What I mean is if you're right-handed, you would have it on the right side that you're coming going through your bead first from the left to right, and then you go up and under, and have these loops on the outside cord, whichever side that ends up being. 
because it's much easier to grab a hold of them with your awl and adjust the tension if it's on the outside cord. If it's on the inside, it's just going to get caught on, the, on all this and be in the way. So what I'm going to do now is loosen this a little and just go ahead and flip the whole thing around. Now I haven't finished any of my ends up here because at the end I want to be able to maybe pull some of these leather cords if I feel I need to adjust the tension. I may want to stitch in another bead or so on one end. So I'm leaving yeah, all this mess up here. Now I've got that flipped around and I can tighten this back out again. You're going to attach a piece of your silk cord the exact same way by wrapping and gluing. And I actually ended up using two different beads on here because I realized I didn't have enough of the ones I started with. But you can hardly tell. And I, once I realized that, I saved out half of these little check glass beads and I'll put those on the end and I don't think it'll really be noticeable. So I've got the bracelet flipped around, my thread attached, and I want to just take this final piece of leather cord and add it up here. Like all the other ones, it may require adjusting. It's done the exact same way that you did the rest of it. It's just an additional row. So I'm going to just come up anywhere in here. You just have a couple other things to think about as you're doing your stitching or weaving or whatever you want to call it. And that is the position of these center rows. You want to try to keep them straight. Let's see, I want to go maybe down there right before that first bead on the inner, the middle row. And then just like before, come under and up, under that leather cord and up through between the two. And then the same on this side, under and up through and between the two and back through the bead. And I'm just going to take a look at my rows here. See how this is slanting up? I just want to take a moment and tuck it down. And also take a look at what the spacing decisions I made on the first outer row and kind of try to match that. So I'll go down, let's see, I started with that one. So I'll go down here between those first two rows. And again, up through the middle, pick up a bead underneath the outside one and up through the middle. And I'm still checking for splitting. And with the exception of the fact that your one of your cords already has beads on it, and you have to kind of pay attention to how you're spacing them. Other than that, it's really the exact same thing. And that's all you do. You just carry on doing the same stitching, adjusting these center rows to try to make them going kind of straight across and straight across instead of slanted. You stitch all the way up to the other end, adjusting the jig as you need to along the way to keep your tension as even as you can manage, but we will have a final opportunity to adjust the tension at the very end. Now, if you find that you are running out of thread and you need to tie a knot, you want to stop when you're adjacent to one of these rows of beads. That way you can make a knot and go through it. So I'm going to go through right here place a knot right before that brass bead, so just right there. And then I'll go through these, you can pull it through, and then make another knot over here on this side, just like you did on the first side. If you want to add a tiny, tiny, tiny dab of glue, you can do that.
Well, I don't want to add glue there, actually. I don't want to glue this loop to the cord, so I think I'm going to not do that for my knot. I think I'll just leave that end, and I'll remember when I'm done that I want to go back and add a dab of glue there. Once I have everything uh, the right tension and position the way I want it. And then you just tie on a new one the same way, running through, maybe I'll run through this one and then down to here with a couple of knots and leaving the tail for later to finish off at the very end. So that took quite a while, but I finally finished all the stitching and I'm really happy with the way it looks. I'm glad I persevered with that outer border because I think it just adds so much. Now your center beads may not be lying the way you want them to at this point. And we left all these tails, didn't tie anything tight so that what we can do at this point is just start kind of loosening things up a little bit because it's the reason they're not lying flat is that they were pulled tight just by the tension that we put on the outer ones so you just start at this end and i know this is a lumpy mess i, I had <laughs> i had one of mine, when I went to take the binder clip off, it was wrapped around the binder clip, which I had to pull apart. So it's a little messy, but this isn't really going to be visible. It, it'll be under the button and then under the loop for your closure. But you might attempt to do a slightly neater job than I did here. So I'm just kind of pulling sideways, starting down at this end where we started, and then working my way down. And, the, and I can, I don't know if you can see, but I can feel it moving. And see how that's lying much more nicely than this one. And so you just kind of keep working your way down. This is why we didn't want to glue the uh, these ends in. I realized that as I was saying it, because I wanted the leather to slide inside these loops of the silk thread. about there there now that's that's much nicer so now what I'm going to do is find all of my thread ends not the leather but just the thread and make sure and pull those up neatly so you should have, at this point, three thread ends and four leather ends. And I'm just going to pull them all so they're neat. And then I will gather them all together. Let's trim off some of this excess. At this point, now we can. Once you're sure everything is arranged the way you want it, Go ahead and gather those all together. And then just do an overhand knot with all three. And to guide that knot so you want it right there at that point, you just tuck your awl in and pull it tight around there. Next I'm going to gather everything here all of the threads and all of the cords and repeat to make an overhand knot. So this finishes these thread ends nicely. Again, an awl is just a wonderful tool to help get all of those and get a nice tidy knot exactly where you want it. You may have to pull all of your cords, your leather cords individually, to tighten it up. At this point I would add a drop of glue right there and then once those dry I can snip off the excess. 
And then to finish your closure, take the longest two of these cords, snip off the shortest two, because you got that bit of glue in there. Another overhand knot. And this time you want to refer back to your button and make sure that you're leaving just a big enough loop for that to fit through. Scooch that down a little. It's a little big. This next step is optional, but what I like to do is make one more loop. And that makes your bracelet adjustable. Pull those snug, snip off those ends. And of course, as I mentioned before, add a, now you can add a dab of glue to these ends where you had to change the thread in the middle. Let it dry, trim the excess, and you're all done. It's kind of a time-consuming project, but I think the waves just add an element of fun. Thanks for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.